guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Market's actually having a little bit of a rebound from yesterday's bloodbath. You guys having fun yet? Are you having fun yet, especially if you're new to the crypto space? Well, having a look right here, actually some of the altcoins are doing quite well, so if you had the opportunity to buy the dip yesterday, congratulations, but the question is, is the dip going to take another dip? Now today we're gonna talk about a very critical level for Bitcoin that I do have my eyes on, where I am hoping that Bitcoin can sort of hold above. If it doesn't short term, we could be in some trouble. Now is Bitcoin simply going to just follow the same thing that all of the other stocks and precious metals and commodities, equities, etc. are all doing right now? Or is Bitcoin going to finally separate itself as the people's choice for the hedge against inflation? Well, we'll talk about all that today, but I do want to discuss the fact that the next two months could get a little volatile, could get a little bit crazy, and why historically we do have September and October being a little bit rough, especially during an election year in the US. So I want to talk about that. Also want to discuss another aspect that is kind of kind of spooking investors right now, right? Investors are a little bit upset about this. They're a little bit worried. No, I'm not talking about the pandemic. This is some other news that came out regarding banks. You may have heard about it. We're going to talk about that. But speaking about the banks, we do have some good news for US banks as far as stable coins are concerned. It is kind of some breaking news. Also, we have the first Bitcoin ETF Finally, it's here, but it may not be what you were expecting. So we might have to hold off the party for just a little bit. Also, I'm going to end the video on a bit of an altcoin gem that is going to be on the Polkadot ecosystem. And here's a hint, we've mentioned it before. So if all that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed, well, do consider it. We're going to make today's video super quick, super informative. And if that sounds good to you, like, subscribe, comment, or just simply check the video out. All good to me, guys. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. Now, interestingly enough, we have had Bitcoin pull back. We did have a nice bounce off the legacy trend line. And if I zoom in right here, we're actually bouncing around between the sort of resistance and support. So we're at that no man's land between where we want the previous resistance to become support, but Bitcoin is being very indecisive about what it wants to do today. Now, having a look over here, we are still on the legacy trend line. We are able to come down here potentially a little bit more. You know, we could even fall down to about the $9,500 level, have a wick down to this green level right here, which is the lower area that we're looking at to maintain that support. We would in fact close our CME futures gap. And if we did have a nice weekly close above the level, sort of around 9,700, then I would still consider us to be bullish because we would still be putting in this nice upper trend. And as you guys know, markets go up and down, up and down, up and down, with this obviously being the black swan event from the previous fear of the pandemic. Now, we do know that there is a potential chance we could have shutdowns again. We have some fear happening over in Europe. However, I do think on the second time, around. We are a little bit more prepared for it this time. It won't catch us as much off guard, right? We have a lot of the, you know, pubs and bars and stores and shops. We sort of know how to deal with the pandemic, you know, how to stay safe. So I don't see it having as big of an effect, but it would have a big, sort of, it would still have an effect, right? I mean, you are still seeing uh, gold sort of pushing down over here on the four hour. And as I said before, unfortunately, as much as we do want Bitcoin to be that sort of, you know, asymmetric asset that just does its own thing and is non-correlated to any of the other markets. The charts don't lie, and we could see that Bitcoin, unfortunately, is co correlated, you know, to things like the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, silver, gold, and the two lower, uh, the, the green down at the bottom and the sort of aqua color above it, those actually represent altcoin indexes that you can trade over on FTX. And you can see, yes, they are a lot more volatile. They move a lot bigger, but nevertheless, they do still have the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs, the bounces are still correlated, right? So really, it looks like when everyone is scared for cash, you have people losing their jobs, they have fear of the pandemic, you know, coming back again in full swing, it does look like people run into things like stable coins or cash or whatever it is, but essentially they move to something stable, right? Something that 
that's not gold, silver, or Bitcoin like that. You know, same thing happening over on the S&P, like I said. Now, having a look at Bitcoin, I still do think as long as we maintain above this trend, everything is looking great. No reason to get 100% bearish over here. We could have a rough couple of months, okay? Gotta be patient, guys. Look, we had our month, month and a half of crazy altcoin pumps. We were having our 10x gains, our 20x gains, and now it's time for the markets to have that correction, to have that pullback, to have that sort of sort of back to reality, right? Back to the back to normalness, normalcy, normality. I don't know which one it is, but back to being back to just the level-headed, you know, Earth, right? We're not going to the moon just yet. We will go to the moon, but not just yet. Now, over here, I do want to talk about something that Lark pointed out, and he said, historically, the S&P 500 have done poorly in September and bad in October, especially during election years. Bitcoin's high correlation, which I just showed you to basically everything else that's happening right now, uh, you know, with the equity markets as well, could mean that we are in for some big bumps over the next six weeks. The good news is, however, that November is usually a historically strong month. So if we can just get through these next couple of uh, months, not to say there won't be some altcoin gems in the meantime, we might be able to make and, you know, flip some trades. However, whereas, you know, you were basically able to close your eyes, throw a dart, hit an altcoin, you might not be able to make money as easy as we were, but it is a good time to sort of maybe get involved in those long-term projects that we think are going to be promising because I, I think a lot of the projects right now, we had a lot of them dumping. Some of these altcoins right now, not the vegetable tokens, you guys know how I feel about those, but some of the altcoins out there right now are heavily undervalued. I think some of them had incredible sell-off, 75%, 80%. I think when they do spring back, you are going to see an alt season probably 10 times bigger than what we saw before. So if you thought those 10x gains were sick, you just wait for the 100x gains you're going to be seeing across the board during the next alt season, which usually follows after the major Bitcoin pump. Now we might have to wait until Bitcoin starts to really move significantly to the upside again, but patience is the key. And we do know that patience, uh, you know, is a virtue and you usually do get rewarded, especially in Bitcoin. Now, I just want to talk about a few other things before we get into uh, sort of my altcoin gem that I'm actually getting a little bit more excited about than I was originally. Originally, it was just a fun coin. Uh, we'll get to it in a sec. But anyway, so Matthew Dibb, Stack Fund's co-founder and COO, he said that sustained risk off in broader equity markets will lead to heavy offers across major cryptocurrencies. Now, Bitcoin may revisit some of the lows, and he's looking at around 9800 70. Keep in mind, I showed you guys on the chart, if we were to go down to that level, sure, it would suck short term. You're going to have to watch your portfolio go down, but it'll be healthy and it'll still be putting in a higher low on the macro scale. And as long as we're trending upwards macro, you know, on the monthly, on the weekly, perfectly fine in my book, right? So a potential recovery in the stocks may have little to little positive impact on Bitcoin, according to Dibs. And he says it needs to be accompanied by an uptick in precious metals as well. So even if stocks start to recover, you also want to see some of those hedges, right? You want to see the precious metals going up as well. Uh, the 60-day positive correlation between gold and Bitcoin has strengthened. And you can see right here, we do have the bear flag breakdown and the descending triangle breakdown as well. So Bitcoin and gold, although they're not the exact same chart, they do have very similar movements, as I showed you before in that comparison. Now, in the same hand, you had Dr. Jean uh, Boyvin, I think is uh uh, their name, head of economics and markets research at the BlackRock Investment Institute, had to say this about what's going on. And this was over on CNBC. Market volatility is returning after months of steady advances in risk assets, and we see elevated volatility ahead of November's U.S. election. In fact, like I told you yesterday, my dad, bit of a conspiracy theorist, he seems to think that... Um, there's some crazy group that's, you know, destroying the markets right now, right before the U.S. elections, uh, creating all this FUD to get Trump reelected. I'm not going to go into that today. Let me know if, you know, you think there's something like that going on. I do believe there's a lot of shadiness in the world with, you know, these people that control the world. That's for another time, another video. But nevertheless, what we can see right now is that market volatility is returning. And in addition to negotiations of the new U.S. fiscal package that are dragging on, the pandemic is still a concern, definitely in Europe, 
probably here again. You know, we are going to head into the winter months again over here in the U.S. And yeah, that's usually when, you know, you have the flu and these things come back, right? Another factor we need to talk about that could be affecting crypto as well is the strengthening of the U.S. dollar. We've actually seen the U.S. dollar index upticking a little bit, which is not a great sign for these other assets, right? Usually when the dollar goes up, you tend to see the other ones have an inverse effect on it. And one other story that kind of has invested investors spooked right now is the fact that you have a congressional investigation into a 2016 U.S. presidential election that has recently unearthed evidence that major banks, I believe Deutsche Bank was one of them, has processed around $2 trillion in transactions despite suspecting that they were connected to illegal activity. So looks like the guys that you know, these bankers and everyone that comes out and says that, well, you know, Bitcoin is used for money laundering and all these other things. Well, Let's be real. The U.S. dollar is definitely the leader when it comes to illicit activities. Don't think I really have to go into that. We all know if you want to do something nefarious and not get caught, you do it with cash. You don't use Bitcoin. Bitcoin is traceable, right? But, you know, that is one of those misinformations that is spread amongst the general public, right? Now, one thing I do want to talk about, this is a positive. We have the U.S. Office of the Comptroller of Currency has officially clarified that stablecoin issuers may hold reserve in national banks and federal savings associations. So this is showing legitimacy for for cryptocurrencies, maybe not all of the DeFi vegetable coins, but definitely for stable coins, probably sort of extended to Bitcoin as well. And according to the OCC's interpretive letter that they recently distributed, reserve accounts can either be funded through deposits from the stablecoin issuer or the stablecoin holders themselves. So this is definitely a step in the right direction. And we do finally have the world's first ever Bitcoin ETF. But is it time for celebration? Well, it does come with a catch. Now, it's going to be launched on the Bermuda Stock Exchange by Hashdex, a regulated Brazilian fund manager, and NASDAQ after garnering approval from Hashdex's NASDAQ Crypto Index. The news continues Bermuda's legacy of being a crypto-friendly offshore international business and financial center. Now, 3 million Class E shares will be issued for trading, and the exchange-traded fund is expected to go live by the end of this year. Hashdex currently boasts 46.5%. Four, uh, doesn't say billion, million, trillion. I don't know. It just says forty six point four, forty six dollars and forty cents. No, I'm sure it's not that. In assets under management uh, across their four funds of Zappo, Kingdom Trust, Volt, and uh, KPMG is their firm auditor. Now, here is the catch: for years, many Bitcoin proponents and cryptocurrency enthusiasts have been asking the question. When Bitcoin ETF. While one is officially on the way for the Bermuda Stock Exchange, the prospect of such a regulated, insured, and institutionally focused vehicle for Bitcoin exposure appearing on exchanges in the United States still, unfortunately, appears quite grim. However, we do have a former Goldman Sachs executive, you might know him, Raul Pal, who recently has come out and says that he has over 50% of his holdings in Bitcoin. That's a lot, considering most people recommend about 1% to 20%. Of course, you know, crazy guys like me on the internet have upwards of 70 to 80%. But hey, don't do what I do. I'm just a crazy crypto nerd. But you do have Raul Pal saying that he believes that a Bitcoin ETF is in fact coming to the US quite soon. He says, I'm going to give you the biggest front running opportunity of your life. They will get an ETF across the line. There will be billions of dollars that pour in every pension pan plan will allocate some money to it. He says every family office will allocate some money as well. And the more the price goes up, the more they will allocate. So if you think crypto is boring right now, if you think Bitcoin is just a terrible investment and you're thinking about selling all of your Bitcoin right now, well, that's your personal choice. And if you need money to pay the rent, I certainly wouldn't say to throw all your money into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. That's irresponsible. However, I will say that in two to three years from now, maybe even by the end of this year, who knows, we could even have a phenomenal pump in all of the markets come November when we do have the election, right? 
Well, then you're probably going to be kicking yourself for either selling or not accumulating more at these prices. Now, let's talk about the latest crypto craze, which is NFTs. Now, NFTs are not new. They are very big in crypto right now. They did have some popularity last year when we had Engine Coin. You know, they were dealing with their new... ERC standards, 1155s. We were talking about trading NFTs in video games and stuff like that. And now you've seen meme coin absolutely skyrocket up another 80% today. If you actually had an opportunity to get into meme when we first mentioned it, I believe you'd be up around six or seven X right now, which would make it one of the best performing altcoins in this climate, considering we have seen some of the other altcoins dump. And listen, guys, you know, some people say on the channel, you know, you won't only talk about the coins that go up. Well, I mean, realistically speaking, I like to talk about the coins that do well. I think we've had more coins do well than not well, but unfortunately, in the past couple of weeks, we have seen a lot of the altcoins fall. And I hold some of those altcoins as well, guys. So it's not like, you know, I'm not... I'm not seeing my portfolio go down, you know, either. I, I am. I'm seeing, I saw some massive losses happen in the past two weeks, but I also saw some massive gains happen, you know, from things we were investing in two plus months earlier. And the idea is to have your gains outpace your losses. There's always going to be losses. You're not going to hit a home run every single time, right? But the idea is, you know, if you spread your money across five different altcoins, let's say evenly, you have, you know, four of them, you know, losing value value, but you have a coin like this that's up, you know, six, seven, eight X. Well, hopefully that one gem will be able to sort of, you know, make up for the losses. That, that's the whole idea with trading. And that's the risk that you take when you get into this game. Now, another coin, which is sort of in that meme coin category is chads.vc. Now this coin definitely comes across as an absolute joke. Some people think it looks like a scam, right? Well, we've actually seen a lot of these silly coins, like for example, meme coin, and now Chad's VC actually offers some promising future prospects. Now today we do have this coin up 72%, and here is the kicker. We only have a $4.3 million market cap on this coin with a fully diluted valuation if all of the circulating supply was out at only 5.8 million. Now I spoke about this project before on on the channel, but why am I bringing it up again? Well, this project is not just a game of weak hands to see who can hold longer and not sell because don't forget you do burn a lot of Chad when you do sell them. So there is sort of that, um, you know, sort of game aspect right to it. But the thing is, if you have a look over here, you know, if you look at the overview of the Polkadot ecosystem, which I am very excited about the Polkadot ecosystem. In fact, down here, you could see Engrave is featured as one of the wallets that I'm excited about, as well as Kilt Protocol, Ocean Protocol, which was one of our best performing calls on this channel, right? Ocean Protocol absolutely smashed it this year. And having a look over here, you will also see that they've added Chad's VC. So what is the big deal with Chad's? Why should we be so excited? Well, it turns out that we do have chadswap.finance coming very soon. In fact, we do know that they're going to be switching to a mainnet over on the Polkadot ecosystem. Oh, and to keep with the theme of the excitement right now, yes, my friends, they are in fact getting involved with NFTs. And actually, here's an NFT of my buddy, Mr. Kristoff. You remember, he, he used to mine a lot of Bitcoin. We've actually had him on the channel for an interview a while back. So these guys are not only sort of, uh, you know, sort of a weak hands type, you know, don't sell too soon. They also have NFTs and they're going to have Chad Swap coming soon as well. And of course, they're being integrated on the Polkadot ecosystem, which I do believe is just getting started. So should you run out and buy Chad's VC? Well, I'm going to say no. And the reason I'm saying that is because I want you to do your research, which is why you should never buy anything simply because I talk about it. However, I do own some of this. I'm going to hold it you know, if it goes to zero, oh well, tough speculative play. However, at the market cap that we're at today of only 4.3 million, to be honest with you guys, with the craze that's been going on, you know, even if we do have a tough couple of months, I do see this market cap potentially being able to hit 100 million. So you do the math. I can't do the math. 4.3 to 100 million. How many X is that?
I don't know. Can't do it in my head. But it's a lot. Let's just say that. It is quite a lot, okay? So that is just something. I think it's like, is it 40x? Is that right? Is my math off? I don't know. Might have not done it well. But I do see some potential in that moving forward. Now, I do have a a quick few updates for small coins we've also spoken about. Today, they actually have some big news. Uh, They have the beta release of their first product, OinDAO, coming over at OIN. And, uh, you know, if you have a look at this project, this is another project that people said, oh, well, this coin has been dumping. Yes, guys, it's been a very rough time in the market. But if you believe in a project, then you wouldn't have any issue holding it. If you don't, then that's probably when you're more likely to sell. But my point is they're going to be launching this uh, OIN DAO. And this service is going to be able to allow projects to leverage existing ERC-20 utility tokens to create their own unique project specific stable coins, right? So this is going to give an additional use case to existing utilities on the tokens and open up projects to more benefits as well. The beta version of the DAO will be released this Sunday, and it's going to allow OIN to be staked for only one type of stablecoin, the USD01. The full public version will include the function to create ERC20 assets and their corresponding stablecoins. So if you want to take a bet on some of these Ethereum competitors, we've obviously spoken about Elrond, we've spoken about Polkadot a lot, and Ontology could potentially be a competitor to keep your eyes on as well, you know, this is what I talk this is what I talk about when I say diversifying your assets. You know, if you don't if you if you're all in on polka dot then go for it, right? But on the off chance, you know that we really do have that bridge that this really does become huge on ontology, it could potentially be worth a look. Also big news from Utu, they've collaborated with Hacken to bring trust oracles to the entire crypto ecosystem. We've spoken about trust being totally broken right now, right? You can't trust these reviews whether they're paid or they're done by bots, right? When you go to order something on Amazon, you never know like who's faking those. So trust is very difficult in a, in a modern time like this on the internet. And hacking, they say, um, you know, is going to help bring these trust oracles. Now, Hacken is a leading cybersecurity consulting company with an essential focus on blockchain security and power trade, which I did speak about. Hopefully, this is going to bring that retail aspect to mobile trading for options. I'm pretty bullish on that moving forward. Now, some people say that things like this, options and futures and leverage are terrible for the space. But look, we've seen an explosion of them in crypto. We've seen an explosion of them in the traditional space. Like it, hate it, love it, doesn't matter, it's not going away, and I am pretty bullish on this, and I was going to talk about the community sale announcement, but as you guys can see, it's already closed in record-breaking time, so it looks like they were highly excited, people were very excited about this, and the sale is already closed, so that's basically that situation today, guys, hope you guys enjoyed my video, like I said, it could get a little bit more rough, this may not be the end of the dump for Bitcoin, we may have to retest some of those lower levels, Dare I say we may even close the CME futures gap, but long term, I'm bullish. Mid term, I'm actually bullish. Short term, a little bit shaky right now. We got to be careful for the next two months. Could be an awesome opportunity to accumulate. Definitely going to still be opportunities for altcoins. Might be a little harder to pick the winners this time, but I do, I do believe long term uh, accumulation in some of these projects right now, while they're still at these lower valuations, will be beneficial and provide some massive gains moving forward. Hope that basically breaks down where I'm sitting, where I'm sort of viewing this whole space right now. So that's basically it for me today. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. If you guys enjoy this content, you know, feel free to smash the likes. Join my free Telegram group. We hang out. We talk all day. Link in the description. Can get a little bit rowdy in there sometimes, but, you know, it's always a fun time. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it, guys. I do have links below in the description. Obviously, they are referral links. If you use them, you help to support the channel so I can continue to bring you this content for the most part every single day. Thanks again for coming back. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And, of course, peace out.